It's full time. Hello and welcome to Full Time, brought to you by AIA Vitality. My name is Shane Crawford. I have taken over host of the show because the other host had decided to be a roving reporter and follow the AFL players up to Queensland. His name is Ed and Woolley. How are you, mate? What's happening? <laughs> Going well, thank you, Croft. Been a great day here, actually, on the Gold Coast. Bit of rain a little earlier, but I did manage to get uh, a dip in. Uh, they opened the borders, actually, up to everyone but Victoria on Friday. It's been heaving over the past 48 hours. I've steered well clear of it, though. I've been keeping a low profile, as you can imagine. So, a Sunday night show. Yes, I want to do it in my boxer shorts, but you're obviously doing it in your board shorts up there in Queensland. Give us a look. Yeah, look, this is a stitch up. I didn't know this was going to happen. But, oh, you uh, are you too. It. Uh, I've, I've, <laughs> and you've got, got your no, thongs on. Oh, no that is proper bogan right there. <laughs> Tasmanian bogan. <laughs> yeah, well, when you come from Tassie, mate, this is like unbelievable, even in winter. So, <laughs> Hey, uh, just, well. just for the record, I love Tasmania, a beautiful part of the world. Hey, how long for Ben Long? Well, it was incredible tonight, wasn't it? I mean, I guess it was probably expected that he would get a fair whack, but sent straight to the tribunal for that hit on Sean Darcy from Fremantle. It was the severe impact, that, that grading, that got it sent to the tribunal. So, Michael Christian not mucking around there. Croft, what did you think about that ruling? Well, I think five years ago, it was, uh, it was a perfect play. Get down lower than your opponent, go in hard. But these days, it cannot be done. So, I reckon he'll get three weeks. A lot of saying four I reckon give him three. He's a good young man coming through and uh, that was just very hard play. But also Essendon, uh, they lose a player for a couple of weeks as well. And there's a, another one from Port Adelaide who's also in trouble. Yeah, Brad Ebert, I think it was this afternoon that was involved in another incident that didn't look too good. She was interesting, high impact. That was graded even though Curtis Taylor came back on the ground. So it'll be interesting to see if Essendon challenges that one at the tribunal. She'll give him two matches. They might... Just try and get that down to one match, I think. Uh, now, the round so far, we started all the way back on Thursday night. And uh, Geelong, awesome win. Love the way they went about it, especially clicking into gear after half time. Collingwood were awesome against the Hawks. The Hawks looked very disappointing, but I thought Collingwood were sensational, especially with some key outs. Fremantle, what a comeback. Great win over the Saints. West Coast. Are they finding a bit of form? Yes, they are, even though it was against Adelaide. Uh, Melbourne, well done to the Ds. We put them under the pump. They found a way to kick a score. The Bombers, only one loss for the year. Just keep putting a W next to their name. Port Adelaide today against the Giants. 17 points that last quarter showed what they were all about. And that's a great win to bounce back after last week. And the Tigers, it was tough. Had a lot of players out. But Ayrton... Uh, they found a way against the Swans, who put up a, a pretty good fight. Yeah, let's take a look at that score now. Quite remarkable this afternoon. It was at, in Brisbane at the Gabba. Just the eight points, the difference in the end. The Tigers were probably on top for most of that game, weren't they, Croft? But they, uh, they just had to grind it out, of course, with so many of those guys missing. Not, not one that you'd probably remember for a long time, that game, though. No, I was a little wet, but uh, what I liked about the way Richmond started was they were on, uh, you know, some of their younger players who were getting some experience in game time and, uh, and we really were relying on them to step up and, and guide the club to a four-point victory. Uh, not a four-point victory, but to grab the four points. Bolton, I loved his energy and I loved the way that he gets the footy and takes the game on. Uh, the Swans, Kennedy unfortunately hurt his knee early and Heaney looks like uh, he's injured his ankle. So... We always know that the Swans will put up some kind of show, but, um, you know, to their credit, they were in the match right to the very end, but the Tigers found a way, and Tom Lynch, after having surgery on Monday, he's out there running around with a wet football, which is definitely not what you want when you want to go for your marks. He found a way to uh, hit the scoreboard and get out there and, and be a real senior figure for the Tigers. So it was a pretty good effort, Anton. Certainly was, Crawford. I don't think he touched it in the first half, but he certainly had an impact in terms of creating a contest in the second. The worth noting for the Tigers, without Cochin, without Asprey, without Nankervis, without Prestia and Tom Lynch underdone, as well as uh, Basha Hooley and Shane Edwards, of course, who stayed home for family reasons. They did cop a bit of criticism on that, at least on social media. But Jack Crisp today from Collingwood has, has gone some way to explain just how tough it is to be away from family at this time in hubs. So yeah, finished. Uh, yeah, while I was doing my hair, found out the news that Victoria was going 
into lockdown stage three again. Um, so as you can imagine, um, all the dads and stuff here are pretty stressed because all their families that are back home, um, you know, they've gone back into lockdown and can't go anywhere. Um, so I'm trying to figure out if we can get them into Perth, uh, work with WA government to do that, um, or somehow get them some kind of help to look after the kids. Yes, it makes me a bit worried. Um, there's a lot of a lot of pressure to fall on uh, Mickey and the kids while I'm here. Just makes me feel sad. Well, it's hard enough just having the kids at home, having them locked up inside and not being able to do anything. It's very stressful um, and gives you a lot of anxiety. So I really feel sorry f for Mickey in terms of this. So I really, really hope we can get her in soon. Well, let's take a look at the other match uh, today at Metricon Stadium. Actually, it was Port Adelaide up against GWS. I've had some doubts about Port Adelaide. They, I didn't think they'd beaten anyone. Of course, they were beaten by Brisbane last week, but a really big victory, 17 points over GWS, or big in terms of what it means for their season. Croft, what did you make of that match today? Yeah, they were good. Uh, the power they found a way, especially in that last quarter when, uh, when it was always going to be tough, but they really teamed well together. Pal Pepper had a bit of the footy. And what I loved about uh, the Powers' win was they had nine goal kickers. And here they are about to sing this song with Ken Hinckley who gets his life membership. That's why he's in the middle there. But nine goals, nine goal kickers, a very pleasing effort, especially bouncing back after a, a disappointing effort last week. That's a sign of a good side and sign of a good coach to get in the middle and sing the song. Yeah, you've got to love that from Kenny, don't you? He shows his emotion, but you do enjoy that. He's been under the pump at different times, so great to see Port Adelaide going well at the moment. A different side from what we've seen over the past few seasons, at least. But this was Ken Hinckley after the match. Yeah, you got that right. It was 4.30am when the alarm went off. It was a different, it was a different approach, but um, uh, great credit to our club. You know, our club has, all, has embraced it the whole way. We've been prepared to say any time. We, we, this morning was literally any time, wasn't it? We get up and basically in the middle of the night to play a game. GWS did the same. I think that's what we've got to, you know, people watching the game have got to uh, understand a little bit of the challenges the players are doing now, I think. But I thought we really did control the game for large parts and we didn't probably have that reflection on the scoreboard because we turned the ball over. I was really proud of the way we, we played a really strong game of footy today. Well, Croft, time to put the microscope <laughs> on a few teams and players after the round. Who have you been looking at the most this round? Well, the first one, well, that should have been uh, the Port Adelaide players. They didn't throw enough power rate all over Ken Hinckley. But anyway, we're going to go Isaac Rankin. <laughs> um, what a superstar first game. Kicked three amazing goals, but he was playing on good players. He was playing on Jetta, he was playing on Hibbard. And I'll tell you what, the boy can play. He's going to excite the crowd. The Bombers, well done to the Essendon Football Club. Only one loss this year, that was by one point. But uh, they're going to head towards the finals. Obviously still a long year to go, but uh, they seem to be placed beautifully. Uh, Nick Nat, everyone's talking about how he handed over a phone. We all know the AFL footballers are as tight as a fish's backside. So uh, that was good to see. We love that. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, just a tip. If you are playing against Nick Knack, you are a ruckman, accidentally release some information on your social platform. You might get yourself a brand new phone. And the last one are my Hawks. I love them, but this slow footy, I can't watch. Please move the football a bit faster. It's like a game of keepings off. And, uh, yes, I'm going to switch off if that's going to be the case. Every year they seem to go through a patch where they have two or three weeks where it's slow and overuse and sharing the football around and no-one wants to watch it. So come on, Mr Clarkson, great man that he is, spark him up a bit, go direct, take the game on, be bold, be brave. Uh, please don't call my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was Clarko who put the state of the game on the agenda a few weeks ago, and the AFL, as Luke Beveridge said, they flinched in terms of the holding the ball interpretation. But Kane, Kane Corns today on the Sunday footy show had a different take. He thought it's Clarko's fault about, the, I guess, the boring style of footy almost that they're, they're playing at the moment. What did you make of Kane's comment, Shane? Do you think Clarko has a bit to answer for in that regard? <laughs> I, I think Kane... Uh, well, how many uh, games has Kane coached? Oh, not, none. Yeah, right. OK. So, no, no, look, Kane makes uh, a lot of points and a lot of very good points. And I think he's, he's right in this situation. I think the way Hawthorne have been playing over the last few weeks, it's slow play. It's no good. And there's a reason. Like Collingwood, a very good side. There was a reason they gave them space out wide and out the back. 
is because they're saying, you go there, overuse the footy, and we're just going to wait and pounce as you come towards that forward line. But uh, do you know what? It happens every year for a, a patch where they go through this ball movement, which turns us all off, but then they click back into gear. So don't worry, they'll find a way. Uh, the little master, the angry little master, I'm sure he's not telling him to play that way. So I expect a fast and furious game coming up this week. Hey, Crawf, just before we get mm. off the Hawks, I know we've got another segment coming up. You want up. me to dig him a bit more, uh, do you? But Ben Stratton. <laughs> yeah, Ben Stratton, that was another one of Kane's points, his, his leadership. I, I just want to ask you about his captaincy, and this is without notice. So I'm putting you on the spot here. Mm. What do you think about Ben Stratton leading the Hawks at the moment? Do you think there are other options in the side, or are you happy where that's at? Well, obviously the players think he's the right fit, and obviously the coaches think he's the right fit. He has been for the last few years, does a lot of great stuff behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, there's a reason that he's, uh, he's got that title. Look, you know, when you're not winning, the microscope goes everywhere, and at the moment, Hawthorne aren't playing a very attractive style of football. Uh, they need to fix that. They need to uh, come through the middle a bit more. They need to pull the trigger. They need to be braver when they do, uh, do get to kick the football, and at the moment, they're taking the safe option. So that'll all work out. They need to start winning. Once they start winning... We won't question anything. We'll just say they're back on track. Right, I'll let you off the hook now, Croft. We've had enough Hawthorne talking. Yeah, yeah, talking about enough. Hawthorne's boring me. I just don't like, don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got the Sunday roast. Let's move on. What on earth happened? Two minutes to go. I know you got to, when scores are level, you you got to, take some risks, but calculated risks. Fremantle turn the footy over, they use it going forward, and when the ball goes into their forward line, they've virtually got three players to choose from. Which one do we kick it to? And they've got no opponent on them. Can you believe this? Two minutes to go in a game when the scores are level and you've virtually presented a win uh, on a silver platter. It's not good enough. They'll go through the review. They got it totally wrong. We hope St Kilda can climb up the ladder. We want them to do really well, but unfortunately, um, you know, they had a bit of a brain uh, fade in the last couple of minutes and got carried away. So uh, well done to Fremantle. They found a way. And where did the defenders go from the Mighty Saints? They've obviously decided they're going to kick the match-winning goal, but guess what? Cost them the game. So Saints, lift. We want you to do well. <laughs> Yeah, you suspect that review will be pretty uh, intense there from Brett Ratton for those final few moments. I actually had a few Saints mates text me at about quarter time <laughs> when they were up by six goals talking about how they're going to win the flag this year, but uh, that might be uh, some way off at the moment. We we'll move on. There is, of course, a match tonight at Metricon Stadium. It's getting ripped to shreds at the moment, quite a wet ground, but it's Carlton up against the Western Bulldogs. And the Blues have started reasonably well, Croft. Yeah, they're going very well at the moment. Got plenty of run, obviously enjoying hub life. And um, it's good to see. So uh, there was a nice moment before the game with Lockie Plowman playing the oh, yeah. game. Obviously, cheer squad aren't allowed there. You're not allowed to have betters out on the over, which is ridiculous. So they made a banner for him. And off he went through there in front of his teammates. Beautifully done. Well done. And see, the spirits were high and obviously started the match uh, really, really well. So whether or not they can go on with it, well, only time will tell. It is a little bit wet. But at the moment, advantage the Blues. Certainly is keeping a close eye on Patrick Cripps too, who injured his shoulder early on. He has come back on the ground, but one to watch given how much of a load he does carry at Carlton. Hey, just a question before we uh, head off. Now, what's hub life for you? Are you coping okay? Because we're all in lockdown. It's miserable. <laughs> it's cold. Um, so what's hub life for you in Queensland? Yeah, look, I, I do feel a bit guilty at times, Croft. Uh, so you sure? I went up, got up and had a <laughs> kick of the footy with a mate, had a swim. This was a day off though today, so normally I'd be hard at work following everyone uh, training and all that sort of stuff. So uh, a little bit different to the norm today. We'll be back on the beat, uh, back on the beat tomorrow. And, uh, and what about Movie World? Is that on the list at some stage? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure it's open at the moment, to be honest oh. with you, Croft. There are a few establishments here that I might visit at some stage, but um, just which ones they are, I'll keep under wraps. Don't want too many people flocking there. All right, we didn't need to hear that. Hey, all the very best. We'll tune in next Sunday. <laughs> thanks for joining us, and thanks for watching full-time. We'll see you next week.